uh, so thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Matt Thomas, and we are here today to talk. We're here today to talk about Ajax and Joomla. Um, real quick, just to introduce myself. I'm a member of the production leadership team. I'm also known in and around the Joomla world as Between Brain. I mention that mostly because if you have questions after t today, you can track me down on most social media at Between Brain, uh, mostly Twitter. But you also can find me online uh, through my website at betweenbrain.com. You can email me, Matt, at betweenbrain. And this talk is also online, written in HTML, woohoo, at betweenbrain.com slash talks slash hello Ajax world. Now, I should start out by saying Ajax and Joomla really isn't a new thing. What's new about Joomla that we're here to talk about today is this thing called the Joomla Ajax interface. And what that is, is as of version 3.2 of Joomla, it's a core component. And there's also a standalone version for Joomla 1.5 and 2.5. Uh, I should also mention before we get too far into things that um, there's actually a, an organization on GitHub. It's the Joomla-Ajax interface organization, where you can download the 1.5, 2.5 version, as well as sample modules and a plugin. Now, basically, the Joomla-Ajax interface, also known as COM-Ajax, is a component that I created less than a year ago, actually. And it was inspired while working on projects for the Guggenheim Museum. I've worked for the Guggenheim as a contractor on a project basis for just under two years. And in the course of that time, we're working on a number of projects that we were working on optimizing page loads and, and maybe enhancing some functionality. But we ran into some limitations with Joomla. So this inspired the idea of creating something like Com Ajax something that is basically an interface that can be extended. Uh, we'll talk more about what that means in a few minutes. And really, the, the nutshell of what Com Ajax is, is it really resolves a limitation in Joomla of being able to make requests to modules and plugins. Now, you could do things like that in the past. It's just there have been different techniques for doing it. And part of the goal was to create a single solution that could be reusable. So that's kind of what I set out to do. One thing that's really cool, a story I like to tell, is about how the role community played with Com Ajax. I shared this idea one evening on Twitter, and it instantly received some really great, encouraging feedback. Like, hey, that's a cool idea, or I thought about this too, and this is how I approached it. So there, it, was, it was definitely fostered by community. So a lot of people provided great feedback when I shared this idea. That inspired me to create a prototype. I remember it took me 45 minutes while my wife was creating dinner. and. Um, I put it out there, I shared it, and Nicholas from Akiba was kind enough to look at it, and he provided some very helpful feedback. Uh, the original version was a little bit too flexible. Uh, in other words, it was a major security issue. It actually, it actually you could theoretically profile basically a, an entire Joomla website through com, the original version of Com Ajax. So that, that feedback and the feedback from other people once I shared that initial prototype, really led to the evolution of what it is today and what and how it became something into core. So uh, Ajax in 30 seconds or less. First of all, show of hands. Has everyone here worked with Ajax? So basically everyone. So I don't really need to spend 30 seconds talking about Ajax. Um, the key thing to mention here is the fact that Ajax uses JavaScript on the client side, and it, it needs to be able to make HTTP requests. Now, um, I'm just curious, how many people actually read the full description of this talk? Awesome. So nobody. <laughs> so in the full description of the talk, um, I actually go into some detail about what we're focusing on. We're actually focusing on standalone modules and plugins. So we're not talking about components. And that's relevant because you've always been able to have some, some sort of Ajax functionality with a component. But if you have a standalone module, that is a module that does not have any corresponding component, for example, a module that may be working with external APIs, having some sort of Ajax functionality, making an HTTP request to itself was virtually impossible in Joomla. There are ways around it. A lot of times, people created a standalone component or maybe a plugin. But now we can do it with just within the module because we have COM, Ajax, and Core. So that's basically the, the obstacle. In Joomla, a request must always be made to a component. It can never be made to a module or plugin. Think about menu items. You can't create a menu item 
to a module. That's by design, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's just the way Joomla works. So the challenge was to create that standalone uh, application, basically, uh, that, that you could create a module for, or even plugin. We built in support for plugins as well. And uh, Com Ajax would provide that functionality to make those HTTP requests. So that's the solution. Here's a sample of uh, JavaScript written in jQuery. I probably shouldn't have written in jQuery, but I think a lot of people understand jQuery very well. It's very readable. And you'll see right here that we're making um, the request to option equals com Ajax, plugin equals hello kitty, format equals JSON. And that's the JavaScript part of it. You'll see here that we're actually making the request to com Ajax. That's the component, that's the interface essentially. And we're telling it that the plugin that we want to get, that we want to work with is the uh, hello kitty plugin and the format equals JSON. I, I mentioned, uh, you shot my picture of my daughter, so hence Hello Kitty. Trying to sneak some of that in there. So, a lot of this is thanks to Nicholas at Akiba. We had to impose some conventions, and it's not just because of security issues, but um, by having conventions in place, by having naming conventions, that makes it easier for developers to use Com Ajax, and it makes it easier to uh, actually retrofit existing modules and plugins to use it. So we have a few uh, required URL parameters. And everything that we're talking about right now are URL parameters for that HTTP request. So obviously, the option always has to become AJAX. That's the entry point. We have to tell it whether or not it's a modular plugin. So we'll just say modin equals whatever the name of the module is, or plugin equals the name of the plugin. And uh, as of right now, we are requiring a format. So uh, basically, any format that Joomla supports, such as uh, JSON or RAW, Com Ajax also has a built-in custom format of debug. It's basically a developer-friendly, human-readable format. So if you're returning a response, it'll be broken up. Uh, and I'll show you an example here in a few minutes. So you can look at your response um, in your browser if you'd like to. If you're working with modules, so this is when option equals com ajax, module equals whatever. When you say module equals whatever, let's say module equals um, session, so a module named mod session. That implies a few things to you as a developer. Uh, first of all, com ajax will actually look for a helper.php file in modules, mod, the name of, the value of the module parameter, so if module equals session, it was, it, Joomla will look in, com Ajax will look within your Joomla installation at modules mod session helper.php. So you must have a helper.php file. That's required because that seems to be fairly common convention for most modules. And your class name for within your helper file is mod first letter uppercase. So in this case, mod uppercase session helper. Once again, fairly common convention for Joomla modules. Uh, okay, so by default, com Ajax will fire the get Ajax method. So if you don't designate method equals whatever, it will, it will fire get Ajax. So there's that default value, but if you want to do get, set, um, do something really cool with Ajax, you could just say method equals do something really cool with, and com Ajax will look for the value of method plus Ajax. I'll show you some examples here in a few minutes. So right now it might be a little nebulous, but we'll see some actual concrete examples here in a few minutes. So this is an example, uh, example module. You'll see right here, this is fairly common Joomla file structure. And really the point is we have to have the helper.php file in that right location. You'll see module equals session. So we have a class of mod session helper and we're defaulting to the get Ajax. I'm just returning a, just a string for right now. So plugins, this is something a little unusual, but when creating com Ajax, I figured, well, why not support plugins? And at first I really had absolutely no use case for it. But now I have a few, and if we have time, we'll show you those. I think they're kind of neat, to be honest with you. Um, so this is when you say option equals com Ajax, plugin equals 
let's say latest articles. So that means I have a plugin, a plug underscore latest articles. And what that does is uh, because plugins are event driven, com Ajax will actually fire that event. So it'll be on Ajax the value of plugin, the plugin parameter. So if my plugin parameter equals latest articles, com Ajax will fire on Ajax latest articles. So this is the, the structure. Y there really, there isn't much here that you have to follow as far as convention, other than the, the class name. The, um, it's, it's just like a Juma plugin. Plug, plug, Ajax, because it's part of that group, latest articles. Has everyone here created a plugin before? Are you familiar with this naming convention? Raise your hands. So almost everyone. OK, so you're, you're familiar with this. We have an Ajax group, so that's why Ajax is here. It's a plugin. It's Ajax. That's the value of the, uh, of the plugin, param uh, plugin parameter. So additional data, basically anything you want. So if your Ajax module or plugin is looking for additional information, a lot, of a lot of cases you will be, you just pass that in your URL. So for example, command equals add, oops, sorry about that, data equals foo, debug equals true, whatever you want. That gets submitted with your request. And so now we'll go look at some code. This is, uh, we'll look real quick at a very basic example. This is on GitHub at the Joomla Ajax interface organization and it's the Hello Ajax World module. So we'll hop over there real quick. While I bring this up, at this point, does anyone have any questions? No. Either very confusing or very easy. <laughs> That's the goal. The goal is to make it really simple, re really easy to use, and I'm, I'm very happy to say that I wrote documentation before we actually submitted the code to Joomla. <laughs> so this is my Hello Ajax world module. We, I'll, right now, because we're dealing with Ajax, we're using some JavaScript. This is my view file. It's basically an input with a submit button. Oh, that does not work very well with PHP Storm. Yeah. So we have an input and a submit button. Can everyone see this OK? Okay, I'll, I'll pull up the, uh, the view mode in a minute here. And we just, ha just have an empty div for our JavaScript to work with. I'm sorry? Um, it doesn't, no, it isn't actually. That's, that's specific to my, the JavaScript I've written. Okay. So um, I can show you that right now. This is the JavaScript that this module uses. Now, this is in, um, <laughs> this is not the way I would do it in production, but I've written it out longhand and I'm just injecting it into the head just for example purposes. And I'm using jQuery once again because it's very readable. So basically I'm saying here that when you click the input type equals submit, we're gonna get a value. And that's the value of the input with the name of data. Oh, thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Once again, the request will be made to option equals com Ajax. Module equals hello Ajax world. The data, the data is a custom parameter that I've added in my module. It's going to be equal to the value, which is the value from the input with the name equals data. And the format is raw. And all I'm doing here is I'm updating that status div that you asked about. That's it, that's the JavaScript, that's the request. It's very simple. Ah, it doesn't, uh, that's the problem with, um, why are we, And so this is the last piece of the puzzle, the helper file. Yes. 
So the module is Hello Ajax World. So the class is mod Hello Ajax World Helper. And I'm using the default method of get Ajax. And all I'm doing, I'm getting the value of the data parameter in the URL. And I'm returning a string plus that value. Pretty simple, correct? Really easy. So to show you a little more of a little more advanced example, we also have this session module. So I'll show you in action here. I'm using a PHP session to store values I'm submitting. So I'll do a hello Ajax world. So I submitted those values each time to the module itself through com Ajax. And that module is creating a PHP session and storing these values. Now right now it's not very impressive, but if I go to a different page and I add another value, you'll see I have my previous values here. So it can, st it can store that data in a PHP session. Once again, just an abstract example. So here's my mod session. And it's a little more involved here because we have PHP sessions and we have different functions. So we have um, I have a command parameter. And this command parameter has different options of add, delete, destroy. So we can add, delete, destroy values to the PHP session that the module is handling. So you can see I'm just manipulating the session here. Straightforward or confusing? Straightforward. Straightforward. Okay. Any any questions right now about modules? Is this just Okay, yes, absolutely. So the question is, what if we don't want to use get Ajax? Oh, that's the method parameter. So there's a method parameter. You could say method equals um, set Ajax, for example. So you could have getters and setters. And so that would be part of your, your HTTP request. So option equals com Ajax module equals session, method equals set. And then that tells com Ajax, instead of calling get Ajax, call set Ajax. So that's an optional parameter, but that allows you to have different functions. You're welcome. Any other questions at this point? Okay. So is anyone interested in looking at what we can do with plugins? So plugins, are kind of an added bonus when it comes to com Ajax. Obviously, you, you don't have a front end for plugins. And, you know, in retrospect, the name com Ajax may not have been the best name because we're not talking about Ajax anymore when it comes to plugins. We're talking more like API functionality. And so that's one of the use cases I came up with with using com Ajax. You can fire plugins to create API like functionality. So on the Joomla Ajax interface organization, I have this plugin called Latest Articles. And actually, I'll show you the code real quick. I'm very proud of the fact that it's tiny. This is the entire plugin. Can everyone see that okay? So essentially, the bulk of the code in this plugin is a database query. That's all I'm doing. I'm just querying the database, give me the last five articles, and return them. 
That's all it does. So it's really simple. And as a result, I'll get a response like this. So I'm just making an HTTP, HTTP request to com Ajax plugin equals latest articles and format equals debug. I could ask for a different format, for example, if I wanted to, JSON. Um, if I called JSON, it'd actually try to download the file because of headers and things like that. But this is the, the custom debug format. And you can see here we have our latest articles. So this creates a very easy way to implement API-like functionality in Joomla today. Now, of course, you can get more advanced. You can start uh, submitting tokens with your header requests, and your plugins can look for that. Uh, but the example here is a very simple API-like functionality, which took maybe five minutes to write. So if you want to get your data exposed and provide it to other consumers, you could do that today with Com Ajax with just some simple plugins. Yes? Okay. That's a good question. So can the question is, can you provide a custom format? And at this point in time, no. And so to give you a better example, originally the original version of Com Ajax did not require a format. So you could designate any format you wanted to so you could use a format that Joomla already provides or one of your, a custom format. Uh, there, was, there was quite a bit of discussion at the time to enforce one, and it was decided to enforce a format. And ironically, there's a discussion right now to reverse that. Mm -hmm. So um, obviously, there's differences of opinion on that. What One idea that I had to kind of find a common, grad, common ground is to provide an optional uh, parameter to override the format, or maybe if you designated a format that didn't exist, Com Ajax could look in the plugin or the module so for that format. Like yeah, something like that. Um, so yeah, right now it doesn't provide it easily out of the box, but it's something that a lot of people are discussing, and we'd love to get your input as well. Yes. Yes, exactly. That's my fault. That's my fault. <laughs> that's in the plugin. So, yeah, that's the fault of the plugin. But yeah, you could do something like that. Um, but yeah, it would, would be nice to be able to pro provide that option, that ability. So, um, any other questions at this point in time? So, another interesting use case. I've been playing with creating. Uh, just kind of a, a solution in Joomla I'm calling Injector. And really, for all intents and purposes, it's a lot like uh, no numbers, articles anywhere, modules anywhere, all wrapped up in the one. Plus, it does some other things. Uh, for example, what it provides out of the box that I, I needed control over it was formatting and having sub-templates. So I can have like different styles, for example. And so the idea is you can click a button to inject an item. You get a modal. You select your content item, and, and it creates the short code. And then when you look at the front end of the site, oh, I'm sorry, I'm right here. I actually need to enable that plugin. <coughs> So you can see you can see here right now I have my my short codes. I just enabled the plugin. So now I've actually injected those articles. Uh, my goal was to provide templating. So you have access to the entire content object. So I have access to metadata, all the little bits and pieces I might need. And then I can create templates and sub-templates and all kinds of fun stuff. But the relevant point here is if you look at these editor buttons, they're basically making calls. Oh, you don't see the editor button. All right. Um, okay. 
I will do this. There we go. So for example, the, the Joomla article button, still can't see that. You can see that it's, ah, OK, we'll do this a different way. You can see that we're calling com content and a view and a layout, all those different things. But I'm lazy. I don't want to create a component and all this other stuff just so I could have a modal window with some, some content with some information in it. So what I ended up doing is using an Ajax plugin. And the Ajax plugin creates, creates this view. I'm calling com Ajax and I'm firing this plugin injector and I'm using HTML format. So I created a view in the back end just with a plugin. And so you can, you can utilize com Ajax for extending components with views. So when I click that button, I have this view which is normally created with a component. But in this case, I'm just using a plugin. So by supporting plugins with Com Ajax, it provides some, in my opinion, some interesting opportunities to kind of push Joomla towards APIs, push Joomla in different directions that you couldn't do before. Or for example, uh, one reason why I like this approach, sure, you could create a system plugin that always fires in every request that, may, that might look for a custom parameter before it re returns a response. But in this case, this plugin only fires when I'm calling it in this one instance. So theoretically, it's more performant. Theoretically, you have less uh, chances of having some sort of conflict. So I think it's a little more insular. It's a little, a little more secure, safe that way. Uh, but the bottom line is it provides some interesting opportunities, I think. So and hopefully, and, and this, is, this will sound funny as being the creator of Com Ajax, Hopefully, we can get rid of it here pretty soon and have full API, uh, hypermedia APIs or web services in Joomla core so we can do more fun, interesting things like this. So uh, any other questions at this point in time? None. Oh, yes. OK. Beautiful. Um, how, how, sorry, how you can increase much more the security of this kind of communication? Well, you, I think we were just talking about this in, um, was it Pierre's talk earlier today about uh, passing tokens? One idea was you, you could put a token in, in the URL, but even better would be to put it in the header. So you could add headers when you're making the request of some sort of token. And then your plugin could theoretically check that header. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Ian, but you could actually authenticate in the database and actually work in some authentication within the plugin. Yeah, I mean, theoretically. So you, you would want to put that in the, the request headers. And you could authenticate users that way, for example, or consumers of the data. OK. Great. Awesome. That would be great to get into the examples, too. Yeah. Probably simple, right? OK. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry? I said, if you know how to do it. Yes. <laughs> well, if we, get it, if we could get an example documented, then it makes yeah. it easy for everyone. So, yes. So how, how can you get that uh, back into the controller or the agent from Ajax? I don't have one. <laughs> But um, you know, I was at the talk earlier today about the APIs. And so that's been an, a recurring theme this weekend, is hypermedia APIs, web services. A lot of people are talking about it. And it seems like the router, that's the issue. 
So um, at the API talk earlier this morning, he's using the Slim framework for routing. So he wasn't even using Joomla's router. And so basically, it's almost like a different application just sitting within your Joomla website. That is one option, and that could be a short-term solution. But I think long-term, we really want to focus on uh, web services or hypermedia APIs in Joomla. Uh, there is a work group, and there, is, there has been some work done. We just need more people contributing, more people helping. And the the yes, I think that could help a lot, too. I think I, from everyone I've talked to who knows a lot about this, it seems like the router, that's, that's like the Achilles heel of the situation. That's, that's what needs to be fixed. Um, but yeah, once that's fixed, it seems like we're right there. Yeah, it may be. Yeah, we so can. The assumption is time is there to change the values of stack map. Should we improve it? Uh, but I don't think we have something entirely changing. So we, we need to learn from the case. Right? Yeah, like we can't do that within Joomla 3. Exactly. So how do we set up so much ties to, to all the Joomla components? I don't think we can. It's It's possible. Yeah, I think really it's just a matter of somebody doing it. Or yeah. did I miss something? Uh, no. I'm, I'm sorry, this is no, 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 not at all. I, no, I think you're right. And that's that's kind of like what this COM API is one component that kind of provides that. But um, I think that's one reason why Pierre is using a separate routing within his API. To ex because we can't change it fundamentally enough without breaking Joomla 3's routing. So <laughs> I'm sure there would be enough agreement in this room that we don't want to break the routing in Joomla 3. So um, <laughs> maybe that's an intermediary measure. Maybe Maybe between now and Joomla 4, we have a separate router package just in the API directory. Um, just thinking out loud. Yes? No, ab ab absolutely. So basically, um, basically, I think it sounds like you're asking about security concerns. Okay. Absolutely, absolutely. So basically, these naming conventions that we implemented for modules. Designating the module in a plugin, but more, more importantly, enforcing the class naming and the methods and the plugin events. That convention isn't used anywhere else within Joomla, within the core. So basically, you have to intentionally, you have to consciously develop a plugin or module to work with Com Ajax, and um, that's that's the thing that Nicholas discovered. See, my uh, my idea was. Wouldn't it be really cool if we could get an Ajax response from anything at any time? And yeah, it's really cool, but it's also really insecure. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know, thank you, Nicholas, again. Um, you know, if we if we lived in a completely honest world, that would be awesome, but we we don't, so we can't do that. But yes. Um, any other questions? 
No. Well, along those lines, thank you very much. You can find this. Yeah.